staged peaceful protest in Kaduna over insecurity. Court convicts permanent secretary over immigration recruitment exercise. The Revenue Mobilization Commission changes formula, increases allocation to states and local government areas. On the foreign scene, Yemen president delegates powers to a presidential council that will carry out leadership duties. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thank you for joining. of the Interfaith Alliance have staged a peaceful protest over the incessant attacks and killings by bandits in Kaduna State. The protesters are asking the federal government to set, step up actions against banditry with the aim of wiping them out. The religious leaders marched through the major roads of the Kaduna metropolis with placards of various inscriptions. They said that although the security forces are trying their best in the fight against banditry and terrorism, their best is not good enough. They appealed to the federal government to implement the submissions made by Governor Nasser Erufai and launch a massive and precise bombing of the bandits inside the forest. The protest comes days after 10 soldiers were killed and some others injured by bandits proscribed as terrorists who attacked a military base in Birinimgwari local government area of the state. You know, terrorists suspected to be members of the Islamic State of West African province have attacked the Dambua town of Borno State. A security source who confirmed the attack said that the terrorists attacked the town around 1 a.m. on Wednesday. He explained that they burnt parts of a primary health care facility aside from the town and parts of Technical Girls College, Dambua. A civilian JTF also said two of their members sustained injuries from gunshots. Staying with security matters, at least 10 terrorists of the Islamic State of West African province, including top commanders, were executed by its affiliate faction of Boko Haram in northeast of Lake Chad. This was revealed by Zagazola Makama, a counterinsurgency expert who closely follows Boko Haram activities in the northeast. According to the expert, the Boko Haram terrorist faction of the Buduma overwhelmed the ISWAP in a gun battle which resulted in the killing of many fighters on the river bank between Kaduna Rua and Kandahar Axis of Niger Republic. Many fighters drowned in the water while 10 ISOP fighters were apprehended by the Budumas in the aftermath of the battle. The Nigerian Senate has considered a bill to establish the National Religious Harmony Commission. The bill sponsored by Senator Sadiq Suleiman scale second reading during a plenary this Wednesday. The report. Leading the debate on the general principles of the bill, Omar said the legislation seeks to establish the National Religious Harmony Commission to serve as an intervention to promote tolerance, peace and harmony in the country. The lawmaker explained that the UN Charter seeks the promotion and respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms for all without distinction to race, sex, language or religion. He noted that such principle is equally embedded in the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Having realized the sensitive role of religion in, Niger in national security, peace and harmony, the federal government wishes to promote interreligious harmony and understanding due to the checkered history of religious intolerance in Nigerian polity. The bill seeks to create an enabling environment for the peaceful coexistence of all adherents of different religious beliefs within the Nigerian nation and as well provide for a forum for public enlightenment and dialogue on to limit controversy and confrontation over allegations of discriminations based on religious beliefs and identities. The bill after consideration was referred to the Committee on Establishment and Public Service Matters 
for legislative input. The committee has four weeks to report back. A bill for an act to provide for the establishment of the National Religious Harmony Commission and for other matters connected there to 2022 second reading taken and the bill is referred to the Committee on Establishment and Public Service Matters for further legislative action to report back within four weeks. In a related development, a bill seeking to amend the Federal Colleges of Education Act to establish the Federal College of Education, Arochiku, Abia State, by converting the existing College of Education, Technica, Arochiku, to a Federal College of Education, also scaled through second reading. The bill was sponsored by Senator Oji Uzo Kalu, representing Abia North. The bill has been referred to the Committee on Tertiary Institutions and Tech Fund for further work. The committee is given four weeks to report back. Operatives of Operation Puff Ada in Kano State have arrested an alleged fraudster who specializes in swapping ATM cards of unsuspecting Nigerians. The suspect, Gaddafi Jibreen, aged 33, upon arrest, was found in possession of 22 ATM cards from different banks, while his operational vehicle, a Peugeot 206, was recovered. Kano State Police Public Relations Officer Abdullah Hikiawa in a statement said the command received complaints of swapped ATM cards from victims adding that the suspect upon interrogation confessed to the crime. Kiawa warned criminals to stay clear of the state as the command has put modalities in place to ensure that the state is uninhabitable for criminal elements. A federal high court in Abuja has discharged and acquitted Senator Abba Moro and two others accused of fraud in 2014 Nigerian Immigration Service Recruitment Exercise. Justice Namdi Dingba on Thursday held that the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission failed to establish the allegation of procurement fraud against the defendants. Moro was arraigned alongside former permanent secretary in the Federal Ministry of Interior, Mrs. Anastasia Daniel Mwobia, an ex-director in the ministry, Felix Alaye Bami, and a firm, Derek's, uh, Drexel Tech Nigeria Limited, with, which was acquitted and discharged in 2021. They were accused of conspiracy, fraud, and money laundering in the recruitment exercise, which ended in tragedy with over 14 deaths caused by a stampede in some states. Justice Dingba dismissed the allegation of abuse of office against Moro over inadequate arrangement and safeguards for the exercise after 667,000 applicants paid 1,000 naira each. He, however, convicted Mwobia on four of the charges bordering procurement fraud but adjourned sentencing to April 27 in accordance with the Administration of Criminal Justice Act. You're watching Trust News Update, coming up shortly. Biting water scarcity wrecks havoc. Join us again for more details. This is Trust TV, documenting the Nigerian story. Thanks for staying. Here's a look at the top stories again. A group of pastors under the umbrella of Interfaith Alliance have staged a peaceful protest over the incessant attacks and killings by bandits in Kaduna State. A federal high court in Abuja has discharged and acquitted Senator Abba Moro and two others accused of fraud in the 2014 Nigerian Immigration Service recruitment exercise. The United Nations High Commission for Refugees has reaffirmed plans to step up its collaboration and capacity to promote zakat practice in Nigeria. Zakat is a form of almsgiving often collected by Muslim faithful as a religious obligation which is ranked next to prayer in the order of importance, according to the Holy Book Quran. 
The workshop centered on release of UNHCR Islamic Philanthropy 2021 report organized by the United Nations Refugee Agency in partnership with the Association of Zakat and WAQF operations in Nigeria. Stakeholders at the workshop lent their voices to the promotion of Zakat in Nigeria. And the numbers of globally displaced persons is increasing worldwide. So, of course, um, we have to look at different partnerships, different mechanisms for resource mobilization. So, in the recent years, UNHCR has partnered with different faith-based organizations. Um, in this case, we're talking about the Muslim uh, Islamic philanthropy, but we've also partnered with churches and other uh, faith-based organizations because the needs are there, the needs are plenty, and we need to diversify um, our resource base. So in the case, in this case, we are not uh, um, the distributors, but what we're encouraging is that uh, we use the um, collection of zakat to assist the most vulnerable, um, uh, internally displaced, whether here in Nigeria or elsewhere. The zakat potential globally reaches up to five hundred billion dollars annually. But what is being collected by all Zakat houses and NGOs and organizations is a very, very small uh, percentage, only a fraction of this amount. I strongly believe that Zakat, if done right, can contribute to poverty eradication, can be the best modality for uh, social solidarity. We have made arrangement with hospitals and pharmacists to identify vulnerables who cannot afford to settle their medical bills and we use that money to pay for their medical bills in their respective hospitals either in the urban or in the rural areas. We want to reaffirm our willingness to partner with uh, both uh, UNICEF and uh, other one uh, in respect of uh, addressing poverty, hunger, and attaining overall well-being and livelihood of our citizens are true as a class. Muslim faithfuls have been admonished to exhibit good behavior and study the Holy Quran during this holy month of Ramadan. The chief imam of Salahuddin Mosque, Gusau Sheikh Aminu Gusau, gave the admonition while speaking on the significance of the holy month of Ramadan in the life of the Muslim community. The report. The chief imam of Salahuddin Jumart Mosque, Gusau, Sheikh Aminu Gusau, explained that the holy month of Ramadan is important to the Muslim community because it was the month which Allah sent an angel to Prophet Muhammad to command him to call out the religion of Islam. For this reason, Muslims are expected to show gratitude to Allah by demonstrating good qualities as they observe the holy month of Ramadan as commanded by Allah. He enjoined the Muslim faithful to be their brother's keeper during the holy month of Ramadan and beyond by helping the internally displaced persons and the poor to enable them to observe the Ramadan fast with ease. The month of Ramadan, as a month of fasting, is a month whereby Muslims are expected to like, behave properly to according to the teachings of Islam, to be of good character, to uh, be very pious, to also uh, assist each other throughout the world, to be very, uh, to be of the assistance to everybody. Some Muslim faithful speak on what they had planned to do during and after this holy month of Ramadan. Muslim always uh, welcome this month because it will help him improve is a relationship with not only human beings but human but also with animals and uh, even it wasn't very close that we were so it was like that. so we are very very as muslim i'm very very happy to see that the month has once again returned and uh, the only preparation we will make is to strengthen to strengthen our faith with god Sheikh Gusau appealed to the well-to-do and public-spirited individuals to use the opportunity of the Ramadan fast to look into the plight of the less privileged persons in the society. Now, after a 29-year wait, President Muhammad Buhari has received a report for a vertical review of the revenue allocation formula. 
The president, however, explained that he will wait for the final outcome of the constitutional review process before presenting the report to the National Assembly as a bill for enactment. Rather than issuing an executive modification order, the president is going the route of the National Assembly because of issues that are recommended by the Revenue Mobilization Commission, including establishing local government as a tier of government and the associated abrogation of the state and local government account. Chairman of the Revenue Mobilization Commission, Elias Mbam, had explained that there was need to review the revenue allocation formula because since its last review in 1992, the political structure of the country had changed with the creation of six additional states in 1996, bringing the number of states to 36. Uh, several communities in just north area of the Plateau State have been hit by water scarcity. This has led to untold hardship on the people. Our correspondent who visits some worst heat areas sent in this report as presented in our studio. Dixon Adama has more. Joss annually experiences water shortages during the dry season as most wells are often dry. Many are unable to sink barhouse due to the rocky nature of the city while others do not have access to pipe-borne water. The recent scarcity, which is however unprecedented, has been attributed to the busting of the pipes which supply water from the water board to taps in the communities. The bursting of the pipes is because of the interchange flyover construction at British America Junction and the dualization from the junction to Lamingo Junction roundabout. Some of the places affected are Rikus, Gangare, Nasarawa Gwong, Anguwarogo, Delimi, Anguwarimi, among other places. actually been suffering from water scarcity. Some people actually trek far away from uh, distant places to fetch water in and sadly they are not even getting the water for free they are getting the water at the rate at the price of like 20 naira some places 30 to 50 naira so we are actually making a call to the government to the members of the national and the state houses of assembly to make their own contribution also that they will be out of this difficulty from Adoyo Bawa to Mahaba Junction, I'm coming from come I take water for here. Every package, one uh, uh, three kilometers. I buy it, one, one keg, 20 naira, 30 naira. Water is very scarce. In these affected areas, the only source of water now is boreholes. There are long queues at the different boreholes as many wait in the scattered sun to get water while others trek long distances. Many are hopeful that these affected areas will receive attention from government and other spirited individuals to address the shortage. Now, the House of Representatives has raised concerns over the devastating oil spill that occurred from an indigenous oil firm's well in some parts of Delta State. In a motion, the lawmaker representing Ope Sapele Uwe Federal Constituency, Uweru Pefe Afe, noted that the oil spill, which started last month, was reported on the 1st of March. The lawmaker informed the House that the spillage could have been averted if Cornell had not breached the environmental compliance guidelines as stipulated by ISO 14001. The House later mandated its Committee on Upstream and Environmental on, on, an environment to visit the areas to assess the environmental impact and report back to the House within four weeks. It equally urged the National Emergency Management Agency to send relief materials to the affected communities to cushion the effect of the spillage. The agrarian community, fishing communities, it has affected the economic activities of these communities in the two local government areas. They can no longer go to their farms because the land has been contaminated. 
their waters have become uh, contaminated. Fishing is zero, they cannot longer fish. So we are calling on the oil companies and other relevant agencies to carry out a cleanup exercise and also so that the communities can carry out their daily activities of farming and fishing. And also for adequate compensation to be paid because this period that this has happened to when the, the environment is cleaned, they will be jobless. They will be depending on nothing. So we are praying this house to call on the oil company and NNP because it's like a joint venture to carry out a cleanup exercise. And before then, the committee of offspring and environment to go for visitation to see things for themselves. Nigerian Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas uh, gas workers, Nopeng, has stressed the urgent need for government to ensure that Nigeria's four refineries are working optimally. The union's president, Williams Akureha, stated this at the fifth quadrennial delegates conference of the union held in Asaba Delta State. With the team, just energy transition for oil and gas workers, social welfare and security, the president spoke on issues ranging from workers' welfare, renewable energy, insecurity and the petroleum industry bill, among others. Speakers at the event took turns to speak on the need for dialogue between workers and employee, as well as workers' welfare. And disturbing not only to the union, but to the entire nation. We are really worried and concerned that a country with the resources and population of Nigeria will depend on importation, thereby exporting jobs and resources to other countries. The federal government should be up and doing to ensure that the refineries are working to reduce importation. But we are grateful that we have an act that will help to improve the accountability and transparency in the oil and gas sector in Nigeria. We however demand that the steering committee that is working to put the implementation in place must be transparent and take on board all labor issues to the satisfaction of the oil and gas workers. I can say clearly that the act of workers is very important as we transit from this current dispensation to greener energy. No doubt there is threat to jobs and also the fact that there are five pillars that the International Labour Organization have already posited what will drive the process of engagement of labour centres and also industrial unions. And one of them is the issue of decent work. Secondly is the issue of social dialogue. The Delta State Government takes issues relating to the oil and gas industry very seriously because it remains the mainstay of our national economy. This kind of forum should enable delegates to have a balanced view of issues involved with a view to devising a new industrial relations management paradigm. The APAPA command of the Nigeria Customs Service says it has generated over 264 billion naira in the first quarter of 2022. This, the command says, represents an increase of 65.7% compared to the same period in 2021 when it generated 159 billion naira. The area controller of the APAPA command of the Nigeria Customs, Yusuf Malanata Ibrahim, disclosed this at the 2022 first quarter briefing at the command house in Lagos. Ibrahim said the command made 46 seizures with a duty paid value of 1.1 billion naira, adding that goods worth 34 billion naira with a free, with a free onboard value of $87 million were exported in the same period under review. Responsible by the Almighty Allah through our officers' creativity and leveraging on the service IT platform to ensure that all revenue leakages have been mitigated, as well as sustaining the level of compliance by the importers, stock stakeholders, and the clearance value chain. In the anti smuggling operation, anti smuggling activities have become a matter of central concern in the command particularly with the activities of recalcitrant traders who are always looking for ways to undermine our system. 
the enforcement unit has been strengthened through strict monitoring, enhanced collaboration, and sharing of credible intelligence with relevant government agencies to suppress smuggling to the BRS minimum. Though the command recorded a seizure of 46 containers of various items, 46 seizures of various items with a duty paid value of 1 billion, 142 million, 876,606 Naira as against 28 seizures made in the corresponding months of the year 2021. Away from Nigeria, Yemen's exiled president, Abdurabu Mansour Hadi, has transferred his powers to a new presidential council in a major political shakeup that took place as efforts to end the country's years-long war gained traction with a fragile two-month truce. In a televised statement on Thursday, Hadi announced his decision to full powers to the presidential leadership council, noting that the council could would be tasked with negotiating with the Houthi rebels for a permanent ceasefire. He also sacked Vice President Ali Moshen Al-Ahamar. Following the announcement, Saudi Arabia said that it is arranging $3 billion to support Yemen's war-ravaged economy. The new presidential council is chaired by Rashad Al-Alimi, an advisor to Hadi and former interior minister with the government of late President Ali Abdullah Saleh. And that wraps up Trust News Update. But you can connect with us via our social media platforms and subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch us live. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thank you for watching.